Welcome back to Mad Wargaming. Today we're going to build the 28mm whale boat, uh, gunboat variation, out of foam core and pink foam board. So we'll walk you through it step by step, and we are going to begin by drawing out the, the lines of the boat. Um, we've got a whale boat book that gives us some basic lines. Uh, this is going to be a variation though, it's going to be a whale boat slash gunboat. So it's going to be much like the gunboat Philadelphia, uh, which we will show you pics of in a few minutes in our video. And um, we're going to basically walk through that, and we'll keep it rolling. Thanks. Okay, so we've cut it out now. Uh, I use a basic uh, foam, foam cutting saw and a utility knife to do all my cutting. I don't do hot wire. Um, personally, I've talked to a few people. Um, John from Dungeons and Glue Sticks, and he uses a utility knife, and he gets really awesome results with it. So I've decided to go that route for now without using any kind of a hot knife or a hot wire. Um, it also cuts down. I don't have to deal with fumes, even though I'm doing this in my in my garage workshop. I don't have to deal with any kind of fumes, so it really kind of works well for me. So now we're on to the next step. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the the base of the hull, and we're going to basically cut out another section and we're going to just cut out like I said this is going to be a combination of a whaleboat and a gunboat so it's, it's a whaleboat design but it's based on on the Philadelphia so we're going to trace this so that we get these lines so that it matches, so we don't have a whole lot of sanding to do once we, once we cut this out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go on the inside of these lines so that we can get sort of a, a wall, and then we're going to cut this out. This is where it's going to get a little tricky, is cutting out the interior wall. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make, and we're going to go a half an inch. Actually, I think, no, we'll, yeah, we'll go a half an inch, half an inch. So we we'll do a half an inch, and the more marks you do, the, the, the straighter it's going to be. So you want to do as many marks as you can, um, within reason. I'm doing this rather quickly for the video. Uh, I probably should take more time had I had I taken more time to to come up with this. But for now, this will do what it needs to do. Anyway, so we'll do this. We'll go all the way around, and then we'll proceed to draw the, to connect the dots essentially. And then we'll take this and we'll cut this out much the same way I cut out the bottom. And we'll do a little bit of finish sanding on it, and then these pieces will be glued together. And we'll have to let the group glue dry. So we'll be back. It takes a few hours. I use Gorilla Glue on my. Um, on my foam core, just because I've, I've experimented with PVA, and PVA doesn't seem to work quite as well as Gorilla Glue, so Gorilla Glue is my personal favorite. Um, I actually used to use Gorilla Glue when I was building real boats, um, and it worked pretty well. It had, had its issues. It didn't, it didn't do well with UV rays over time. But for the most part, it worked. So we're going to stick with Gorilla Glue for this project as well and just see how it goes. Um, this isn't going to have to really worry about UV rays or water or different things like that, environmental variables that, that um, boats that are real boats have to deal with. So let's hope that we can. The Gorilla Glue works with, well with this over a long period of time. We will see. You're going to find that my audience is going to be growing with me. I'm fairly new to this. I've only been gaming for about a year, year and a half maybe. So I'm, I'm fairly new to all this. And I've only been crafting and building. And this is only my second phone core. This is only my second pink phone project. And uh, I'll have video on, the, on my other project as well coming up in the, the next week or so. Um, and I've done some foam core projects, so I'll post those up as well. 
But for now, we're going to go with this. So now I'm going to take this up to my other workshop and I'm going to cut this out and I'll be back in a few. Okay, and we're back. And the next step in our build is to take the gun holes and mount them to the hull. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some finish nails here, and we've just got regular standard finish nails, and we've poked them into the gunnels, and we're going to take some Gorilla Glue. Now, with Gorilla Glue, you want to wet down the area a little bit, and also wipe off any dust and things like that. So we'll do that first, and we'll just kind of hit this up really quick, just like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to draw a line of Gorilla Glue. All the way around the, where the gunnels are going to mount. Then, take and we push this on right to where we want it and we start over here and we can push the nails in move that up a little bit we can push the nails in right to where we want the gunnels to end up so that they will be in the precise location that you want them to be alright Take and we can move this nice to this side. And you'll notice I have some extra nails because it always ends up there'll be something that'll bow out just a little bit that you want to kick in a little bit, maybe. Just like that, right there. I can do that and push that down just like that. And that allows me to put everything together just the way I want it. Obviously there'll be some sanding that has to be done and things like that. We can do that after the boot drives on this. So now what we want to do is we want to take another board and throw it on top of this so that it will dry. And then we'll come back and we'll continue on. So that's that. And we'll come back and check that out in a few hours. Okay, so the glue is dried and we've I've finished doing some finished sanding and things off camera. Um, so you can look at you can see that I've sanded the edges down and um, started to shape the, the vessel. I still need to do some more finished sanding to it, but I've got a good bit of it done. Um, the nails will leave in there, so they'll just get painted right over. And if you notice, I took a pencil, a dull pencil, <coughs> and I basically carved in decking into the into the main deck. So that, and I put nail holes so that when you paint that over, it's deeper than it needs to be. But when you paint it over, the, some of the paint's going to fill some of that in. So we really want that to be. We really want that to be um, uh, to be able to be seen once the paint's on. It'll look it'll look much different once the paint's on. So I'm going to also have to take some spackle. There's a couple of spots where the knife caught on me, so I'm going to have to. I'll use some regular household spackle and fill that in before I start painting, and do a little bit more shaping. So that'll get done uh, off camera. And so we're on to the next step. I've already cut out the pieces. I'm using foam core board, and the idea is that. We want to have a raised deck aft and a raised deck fore, so the, the, the fore deck is going to become a gun deck. So we're going to take these pieces and we're going to fit them in here, so they'll fit in just like that. And then this piece is a raised deck, so the gun will sit on here, and this gives you a gunner's deck. So you've got a double raised deck stepped down, so you can mount a gun right here that'll come out, a large gun. Um, so you run like a a, a 9 or a 12 pounder, and believe it or not, in the bow of this, which is a very large gun. <clears throat> and then you've also got the aft deck, and the aft deck is where you control 
the vessel. So the, a vessel this size, believe it or not, actually had a, had a giant tiller. Uh, instead of, you didn't have a steering, you didn't have like a steering wheel like on a larger or a later 19th century vessel. They had actually a tiller. So I'll be building a tiller for this. Uh, I may put a rudder on it, just I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. I haven't decided what I want to do, but i got to decide that. So the next step is going to be to take, I want to take the paper off of this. So I'm going to um, experiment with a heat gun method to lift the paper off of this so that I can do the same decking method on this foam core that I did on the pink foam. So that's going to be my next project. Uh, that'll be the next step to this. We're going to do that and then get that all glued in, get that all mounted. And then we can work on the mast and all the fine details and the rigging and everything like that. So those will be the next steps. Um, so that's where I'm at at this point. So I will be back as soon as I get the heat gun rolling and we'll, we'll try that out. We'll try that. We'll try to get the, uh, the paper off there as clean as we can. Thanks. And we're back again. Uh, so I've taken a heat gun and I've removed the paper from the from the foam core board. And I've done basically I've done the first one just to test it out before I came on camera. I didn't want to you know mess up and on on camera. So I decided I would check it out and make sure that it was going to work. I'm not overly thrilled with the results, but it'll work for my project now. So we're going to show you how basically I did. All I do is I take a dull pencil, so you, you don't want to take a sharp pencil because it's going to cut just too deep and it's not going to look right, but I just take a dull pencil and I just start drawing the, the lines. You can start either in the center and just draw a plank, and then you want to stagger the planks, so you want to do something like that, and then like that, and you just keep staggering the planks. Um, something like this, and you just keep doing that until you get the results that you want, um, and you fill the entire deck out with what you're looking to do. So we just keep doing this. could use a ruler and you could be a little bit more precise than I'm being right now but this is my first attempt at this and I am finding that doing things on camera is a little bit more difficult than if I wasn't doing that on camera. I think I'm afraid to make mistakes at times so I'm learning that I'm gonna have to do more builds offline Although I want, I want to be live for you guys so that you can see the mistakes that people make, that I make, and hopefully learn from those mistakes. Um, I know I've learned a lot watching different videos and different, different YouTubers and different tutorials. So I'm hoping you're going to learn something from me, even though I'm fairly new to this. You know, we all can learn from each other. And then what I do, once I've got all the, the planks drawn, then I just take and I put, it's not coming out as good on, on this foam board as, as it was on the other one. Um, let me go grab another pencil. Actually, better yet, I'm going to grab Tiny screwdriver. I think this might do the job even better for the nail holes. Let's try that and see how that goes. Okay, that's probably too fine. A 
bit sharper pencil to work better than this, but we'll start with this and see how this works. I found that paint hide, can hide a lot of your Paint can do good and bad because it can also hide some of the detail that you don't want it to. So we'll see how this works. First attempt at doing something like this. So it's a good practice run and hopefully you guys have learned something by watching this. <laughs> good and bad. You may say, oh I'm never going to do that because there are definitely better ways to do it. But hey, you still learn something. I think part of the problem is, is I didn't let the heat on the I didn't put the heat on this foam board long enough, and it didn't really take all the layers off. There is one layer of paper on here, it appears, and I think that's causing me some issues. But overall, I think it's going to work. So let's see what happens here. Let's put this aft. Yeah, I think that'll work. This glue, this Gorilla glue, drives me nuts. It expands, and uh, you end up cutting out as much as you can. But this corner is just causing me problems. I'm going to have to try and cut that out later. So I'm down to the last one, and so I'll let you guys go now. And you've got the idea. So I'm going to finish this one up, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, and welcome to the last part for this weekend anyway. Um, I was hoping to get further along, but I realized that my spackle had completely dried up, so I can't do the finish work that I wanted to do around the edge of the around the edge of the gunnels and the hull. So I've done more work on the decking. Um, when I left you off last, we had cut the planking and the and the raised decking, and I've since mounted the raised decking. Uh, painted it up. I use a brown oxide and a burnt umber. I'm using, you know, very inexpensive paint for this uh, because you, you do burn through a lot of it soaking it in. Um, so I use burnt umber for the for the gunnels in the outside hull and then brown oxide for the decking and then I'm using a Citadel Agrax Earthshade for the for basically the, uh, the wash to get the the nails and the board highlights, and basically I've just gone over over it with the with the uh, the brown wash to get the highlights for the decking. Um, I'm going to have to take a pencil, I think, and, and recarve a few sections that have that, that aren't deep enough. But then I can just go over them again with the wash. So I'm just going to finish this section of decking, and that will be it for now. Um, the next steps are going to be to spackle. I use spackle to cover up my mistakes because this is the first time I've ever worked with pink foam, really. Um, I've done some other minor projects and minor terrain things, little hills and things like that. But this is the first time I've done any kind of a real detailed project, so there are mistakes. Uh, I fully admit it. So we're going to clean those up with spackle and we'll paint over the whole thing. And then I need to do the... the, the uh, the mast, the spars, and the rigging. So we'll go over that probably next weekend. So next, expect a video next weekend um, on part two of this video. And we're just going to finish this up. I'll probably we'll we'll carve out the, the, the sections that don't show up well uh, with pencil on the decking. The sections that don't show up, I'll recarve them with pencil and. Uh, just reapply the wash, and that will give me the detail that, I, that I'm desiring on this. And that'll be that. Just, just do that, finish that up, touch up there. And that'll be that. And I like having some of the spots with the dark spots, because these boats all were waterproofed with, a, with pine tar and caulking. And the caulking was a was a tarred hemp rope or a tarred cotton rope, depending on the time period. So um, it kind of gives it that appearance of, of tar on the decking. So I kind of like that that stained look. 
Um, this isn't going to be a new vessel. This is going to be a vessel that's seen some use. So that's where we're at at this point. And I will leave you there. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks.